Hello, I'm Mark Newton, Deputy Legislative Analyst at the LAO. Our office recently released a report on a new cap and trade program that the state is implementing as a way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions statewide. The purpose of this webcast is to highlight a few of the major issues that we discuss in the report. I'm joined today by the two principal authors of this report, Tiffany Roberts and James Nockbauer. We'll first hear from Tiffany, who is a senior fiscal and policy analyst here at the LAO who specializes in energy and climate change matters. Tiffany, what is the purpose of cap and trade? Oh, thank you, Mark. The state adopted the cap and trade regulation as part of a larger approach to reduce the state's greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels by 2020. And the climate change legislation, which is referred to as AB 32, provides the authority to the Air Resources Board to develop the cap and trade regulation. Ultimately, the fundamental purpose of cap and trade regulation is to provide large emitters of greenhouse gas emissions greater flexibility in reducing their emissions. And it's this flexibility that in turn helps to reduce overall cost of compliance for the state to meet its goals. Tiffany, this sounds like this could be complex. How exactly does the cap and trade program work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? That's a really good question. Let's start with the cap first. So under the cap and trade regulation, ARB sets an aggregate cap or limit on the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are emitted by these covered entities under the regulation. And in turn, ARB then issues one allowance per ton of emissions allowed under the program. Now, the emission sources that are subject to this regulation must then possess one allowance for every ton of emissions that they produce during a given compliance period in order for them to comply with the regulation. So emission sources are essentially faced with a decision of reducing emissions and deciding how many emissions to reduce versus how many allowances they may want to purchase. They've got an opportunity to purchase allowances either at one of ARB's auctions or in the open market. And this is what's referred to as the trading aspect of the program. So to the extent that emission sources have an opportunity to reduce their emissions, they're likely to do so as long as doing that is cheaper than purchasing allowances, again, either at one of the ARB's auctions or in the open market. So over time, this cap that ARB has set is going to decline. And it's essentially this declining cap that will allow us to meet our emissions reduction target. And it's the trading aspect of the program that will allow us to meet our environmental goals potentially at a lower cost. Tiffany, you mentioned earlier about AB 32 that was passed by the legislature in 2006. How does the cap and trade program fit within the overall climate change strategy of the state adopted under AB 32? Right. So following the passage of AB 32, um, the Air Board, ARB, developed a scoping plan. And the scoping plan has a mix of approximately 70 different measures in it that taken together are intended to reduce the state's greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels. So ARB designed the cap and trade program to essentially serve as a backstop so that if any of the other measures in the scoping plan don't meet their target, the cap and trade program will in effect make up the difference. Thank you, Tiffany. We will now turn to James Knockbar, an, an economist in our office, about our analysis of the cap and trade program. James, the report discusses in detail the design features of the cap and trade program and the inherent trade offs of the program that ARB designed. In general, what does the LAO think about the program that ARB designed? Great question. We think the ARB did an overall reasonable job balancing many policy trade offs. The ARB's Choices, however, were very complex because of the many goals the legislature gave ARB in the form of AB 32. Some of the goals of AB 32, for example, include reducing greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels by 2020, avoiding disproportionate impacts on low-income communities, 
and also reducing emissions increases outside of California that could result inadvertently from our policies here. Sometimes a choice the ARB made would have helped them achieve one of these goals, but would have made it harder to achieve another. In our report, we lay out the choices ARB made and also the trade-offs behind those choices. We lay out alternate options as well that the legislature may wish to consider if it wants a different balancing of its goals. Finally, we conclude with a few options that would make the program more cost-effective. James, what, what changes does the LAO recommend be made to the ARB's program? In our report, we lay out several changes that we think would improve the program, be broadly consistent with the legislature's goals, and not have large downsides from a policy standpoint. For example, we would recommend that the producers of offset credits be made liable for any problems discovered with the projects they are using to generate offset credits. What exactly are offset credits, and, and how would your recommended change uh, improve the program? Offset credits are like allowances. They are also permits, essentially, to pollute uh, one ton of greenhouse gases, and they can be traded and used by entities covered by the cap-and-trade program. But unlike allowances, they're not created only by the Air Resources Board. They are produced by parties outside of the cap-and-trade program who are voluntarily reducing their emissions. So a power plant, which is covered by the cap-and-trade program, might pay a dairy, which is not covered by the cap-and-trade program, to reduce its emissions and generate offset credits that it could then sell to the power plant. The power plant could then use those offset credits rather than allowances to meet its compliance obligation with ARB. Our recommended change would make it less risky for the power plant or other covered entities to use offset credits, and this would make the program more cost-effective. Thank you, James. And thank you for watching our webcast, and you can turn to our website to download a copy of the report and find out how the cap-and-trade program would work and all about our recommended changes. 